Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television is sponsored by Nutrien. Nutrien, feeding the future. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Perspective. This is a public affairs presentation of Florida Gateway College. My name is Mike McKee, and my guest on the program is Jerry Walls. He is an environmental educator, and he represents amazing animals. And today's show, we're going to talk about uh, the Environmental Nature Club and the environment here in North Central Florida. We'll talk to Jerry when we come back. Don't go away. extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's it looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey Smokey, catch! Oh, my bad Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Perspective here on Florida Gateway College Television. Jerry Walls is an environmental educator uh, here in Columbia County. Uh, he represents uh, amazing animals. And Jerry, welcome back. You were, you were on the you. show for the Alligator Festival. Yeah, last year. Uh, last year. It's been almost a year. Uh, and you, brought, you had an alligator with you mm -hmm. last time, and you had uh, a snake with you last time. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, this is what you do. Uh, talk a little bit about what, what you do and, and who you speak to and, and what your goal is in environmental education. What I do is I, I'm an environmental educator slash naturalist, um, which really I, I love to share the wonders of our natural world with others of all ages. It's not only children, it's adults, families. And so I have about 50 live educational ambassadors that I care for. A lot of them are rehabs, a lot of them are confiscated, and I take them to schools and libraries and camps, and I involve kids, get kids interactive in nature. Now, I know that uh, you and I talked before we came on the program today that kids don't go outside anymore, um, and how is that a challenge for you? I mean, uh, obviously, if they don't go outside, they're not going to see what you have right. to, to show. Right. Are you hoping to kind of break the, 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 the non-outside kid? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, there's a couple of terms that I use. One of them is nature deficit disorder. And that's really my mission. My mission is to get kids outdoors. Another term I use is last child in the woods. You don't see kids climbing trees anymore. You don't see children out dipping pollywogs, tadpoles. You don't see them chasing butterflies. It's, we're, they're so oriented on electronics, and I am not against computers. I use them, so I'm not against electronics. But there's no balance anymore. Kids don't get outside. They don't appreciate what's here. It's kind of like when you live next to Disney World, you never go. Right. Well, what, what is it? At what point did uh, have, have parents become overprotective of kids, not wanting them to go out? And I mean, when you, when you think about living in Florida, you know, if you live other places, you think there's an alligator in every pond, or, right, or right. and it's all scary stuff. Right, right. But that's not the case. No, no. Um, plus, they were here before we were. So, um, more people get struck by lightning than die from venomous snake bite in the United States every year. So, there's a real misconception. Uh, I guess it's kind of like Halloween. You used to see trick-or-treaters, and now sometimes, you know, because society is so protective. But children just don't, they're so busy doing other things. They're so busy on the electronic side that they don't get outside and see what's out there. And there's so much, so much out there. Um, well, and, and part of what you do, I'm assuming, is that you're going to show what a venomous snake is. Because, you know, the... I've been here a long time, and I know the difference between a king snake and a coral snake. Right. I know the difference between a rattlesnake and uh, a, 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 a non-poisonous snake. Right. How, is that what you're tasked with? That I mean, because I think a lot of people will go rather than try to figure out what kind of snake it is, they just kill it. Right. Right. Well, that's the theory of the only good snake is a dead snake. People don't realize 
that everything in the food chain is linked. Everything is linked in. When you take one layer of the food chain out, whether that be plants, whether that be mammals or reptiles, that pyramid of the chain is the whole. The whole chain is going to fall apart. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, of of misconceptions out there, and um, I try to dispel that. Like you, you you brought up snakes. If we didn't have snakes, we would have rats everywhere. All right? There'd be a real imbalance in the food chain. Think about venomous snakes. Think about the progress they're making in venom research in medicine. So there's a lot of, plus snakes kill things that can kill us. Rodents, how'd the plague get here years ago? Rats, what eats rats? Snakes. So there's a lot of, everything is linked in. And who's at the top of the food chain? That would be uh, us. That would be, well, you, sometimes watching the news, you wonder. <laughs> but yeah. well, speaking us. of snakes now, you and for those of you who weren't did not see Jerry before, you brought your green and I, in honor of you returning oh, with your yeah, green, uh, I wore color my green coordinated. Tie. Let's you brought a non venomous snake mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. uh, that you're a little concerned about. Can we look at uh, sure. you, and does the snake have a name? This one doesn't. Oh, okay. uh, a lot of times the, the kids, the, the, when I go to a program, the kids will name, name the snakes. Let's take a look at the, this. Is right. a, this is a pine snake? A pine snake, which used to be common in Columbia County. And unfortunately, they're, they're disappearing. And it's because of habitat loss. This snake likes high, sandy pine forest. What do we do on high, sandy land for the most part? We build. So this snake is disappearing. So as it disappears, whatever it feeds on is going to be overpopulated and it feeds on rodents. So, but this one, this one, unfortunately it's becoming very rare. And like the indigo snake that is now protected federally and in Florida, this one's probably not far behind. And I've got them tied up here. And I guess I got my exercise in tying the knot cause I can't get it open here, but I will eventually. Well, and we're going to be looking at three different three different uh, animals species today. of yeah three different animals today. Now this one I've had for about 15 years. Got it. I hatched it out of the egg. And this one actually came from Leon County, near Tallahassee. And she's a pretty good size one. So oh, this wow. is a Florida now, pine snake. That's a pine snake, mm -hmm. but you can see where the people may mistake this for, for a rattlesnake. Exactly. Because of the pattern right. on the back. Right. The, so tell us the difference, and I don't know whether whether you can get a, a picture of the head, because that's this is where the, you determine whether it's a... Can't always go by the head. Okay. People say... So I'm glad we're doing the... Yeah. Picture. People... But that's a general rule. Yeah. But basically, people say, well, if the head is wide, it's got venom glands. And that's not true because the carl snake, which is very venomous, has got a round head. I also say the elliptical cat-like cat pupils, when they're up and down, it's venomous. Well, the carl snake has got a round pupil. So you can't go by the shape of the head. You can't really, it, there's only six venomous snakes in Florida, six venomous species that are native to Florida. If you learn those six, you're home free. Now what, so what are those, what are those six? Carl snake, which is the red touch yellow. Right. We have the pygmy rattlesnake. We have the cane break or timber rattlesnake. We have the eastern diamondback. The copperhead is in North Florida, Northwest Florida. And then you have the, that's it. Water moccasin, cottonmouth. Yeah, yeah. So I've, yeah. and I, if you live on a lake, yeah. you're yeah. gonna find uh, water moccasins. Yeah. And those are, those are extremely aggressive snakes. Well, that's, that's another misnomer. Snake, we're too big for any snake to eat. So snakes try to avoid us. Right. A lot of people say, oh, I got chased by a cottonmouth. I got chased by, and there's, I think the only reason you may think you're being chased is because you're blocking its route of escape, perhaps. Right. Um, so this is a 15-year-old snake. Yeah. Um, and you say these are disappearing. Oh, disappearing. Used to be very common. Um, now, do you think that's because you said that the habitat is being overrun by right. uh, buildup or right. what? But you, you think maybe someone sees this snake and they immediately take a, a shovel to it? Probably so. Because, I mean, this is a pretty big snake. Yeah, and, and to your point, some of the non-venomous snakes will vibrate their tail. Right. And when they're in loose leaves, it sounds like a rattlesnake. So. Well, and you, if you look at the tail, I don't know whether you can see the tail, there's, there's no rattle on the end of the tail. She likes the cord. Yeah. 
Uh, so you're you're looking at, and and you say that sometimes they'll they'll vibrate get, their they'll tail. vibrate the tail it, to it's stay, stay away it. from to mimic it. Very good, very good, very good. Yeah, it's basically stay away. Stay you away. See, this, is a, this to me, and I don't know. We've got some young people that are operating cameras here. Would you guys be afraid of the snake if you saw it? Yeah. See, they, <laughs> they both they both shake their head like you know that that's just pretty. If you, if you don't know what you're talking about, and and again, this is why you go to schools. Right. It's you want to you want to uh, educate it. these young people. Right. Uh, that this is not going to hurt you. In fact, it came very close to your mouth. Yeah, she's couple. she's fine. Yeah. But you know, the best advice is if you see an animal, animals, this snake could anything could bite. You could bite if something ten times bigger than me, bigger than you had you, you could bite it. Any snake can bite. The best thing to do is just back up, walk away. You know, uh, uh, Jerry, uh, you brought a good point. Again, we, we talked before we come out here. This could go on the endangered species list mm -hmm. because it, it is disappearing. It's right. Uh, again, the habitat is, is going away. And, you know, people who don't know are maybe taking them out. Right. Um, but you've got species like this that are going away, yet you have other species that are, that are right. overwhelming. Yep. And I, I, I look at, at what's happened in the legislature lately about getting permits to hunt these huge snakes, these the uh, pythons, the pythons yeah. that are overrun, South or overrunning South Florida. Let's talk. And I think you have something else with you. I do. Today. I do. I'm going to put our little baby back in here. Uh, and so you have Jerry, the, the Jack Hanna of North Florida. Who's <laughs> she wants to stay. She likes those warm lights because it's a cold winter. Yeah. And they're, th they typically go where during the cold cold months a brumation period it's not quite a, a hibernation in florida but they what they'll do is they'll go down holes uh, get inside trees but on a january day when it's warm which we haven't had too many um sometimes you'll see them come out sometimes. just to see now again we talked before we came out here what does our yo-yo weather do for for any kind of reptiles does you know we have two or three days of really frigid cold weather where they don't like it. Uh, and then you have uh, a couple days in the 60s. Right. Do, do they get confused or? They know, they're used to it. Uh, actually, in cold weather reptiles, they're ectothermic. They're cold blooded. So they'll slow down their metabolism to almost just enough to exist because they don't want to waste energy in the winter because a lot of reptiles don't feed in the winter, alligators. If they feed heavily and a cold spell hits, that prey item will putrefy in their system. So they don't feed much in the winter. So they adjust their body as per the temperature. But to your point, they, get, they slow up in the winter. They'll get under things, they'll get under pieces of metal. When the sun hits it, they can thermoregulate. So yeah, they're slow in the winter. Let's, uh, you, you've got something. This uh, is, this is a, as you a mentioned, te tegu. a tegu. And this is these, kind of a cool looking yeah, she's critter. pretty, she's pretty neat. Now this is not native to North Florida, not native to the U.S. This is a tegu, T-E-G-U. It's a lizard from, this one is from Columbia. And they're all over South Florida. They're like, you know, much more common than the Burmese pythons that are loose in, in South Florida. These are actually breeding from south of Orlando. They don't really breed up here. It's too cold. And if you could feel her. She's pretty cold. You can feel the... Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty cold. I'm, I'm pretty cold, too. But No, uh, so these were brought to... Brought to pet to, trade. Now, is it mostly in Florida that they survive, or are they in Texas or Arizona? Where Not to my knowledge. Um... But out of all the lizards in Florida, there are more invasive exotic species than there are native species. So and Jerry, w w they, they will get this at a pet store or they, w will they get it from, uh, uh, will they go through the underground, the, no, the no. lizard underground, I don't no, know. No, 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 well there actually is a place called Underground Reptile, so <laughs> no, you can buy these, you could go into a pet shop and buy it, and they're cute when they're little, and then they start getting big like she is. And um, all of a sudden, the cute little animal you bought, you have to think, when you get an animal, you have to think what it's going to be like in five years, six years, ten, ten years. It's a commitment. It's a responsibility. 
But yeah, you know, some people will buy these things when they're really little, and next thing you know, and she's not even full grown yet. Yeah. So are you telling me that people just kind of let them go? Yeah, let them go. But now how, and again, I have a dog. Mm -hmm. I would never let my dog go because he could never survive. That's a good do point. These, do these things, do they just survive? They survive. And unfortunately, when you let these go and they start to establish themselves in parts of Florida, they eat things that other native animals eat. These guys love eggs. And they love something that you love. They love alligators, since you're a UF man. They love alligator eggs. They'll predate alligator eggs. They'll actually, when the female f goes away from the nest, they'll smell the eggs and go down there and dig them out, along with raccoons and wild hogs, another example. And they'll eat the eggs. So you, we're going to have a real imbalance down the line if these things pro keep, to, keep proliferating in the environment we're going to see less alligators. And so the, here again, the food chain gets disrupted. So, so I mean, are, when you're talking to students mm -hmm. about, I mean, it's, it's terrible. But, I mean, these things are going to survive or they're going to, oh, yeah. they're going to do everything they can to survive. Yep. Uh, and so they're like the python problem in South Florida. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a tegu problem in South Florida. Right. Um, and a monitor. These, these are closely related to the monitor lizards, which are all over South Florida. Nile yeah. monitors. Uh, but she's now, this I mean, I guess it's shed shedding, her, shedding her skin. Yeah, she's yeah. shedding her skin. So uh, anyway, uh, this is another animal that, that you don't get a chance to see. Um, that's, again, you look at the beauty of, of nature, and uh, I'm sure at, when we're done here, the guys will want to come over and, and pet. What you have her name for her? Her name is ZB. Somebody Z named her ZB, my wife, actually. I hope she doesn't watch us. She's not somebody. She had a zebra like, like looks like a zebra, so oh, okay. that's that's where she got her name. <laughs> ZB. Oh good. That's good. Yeah, great, great shot. Oh, uh, yeah. look at the tongue. What, and when they stick their tongue out, they're sensing the air like snakes do. They get particles in the air, plug it back into a little organ on the top of their mouth called the Jacobson's organ. And it tells an animal, should I go left? And if you should stick her tongue out again, you see her tongue is forked. Z B. There. See it's forked? Yeah. They'll tell them to go right or left, feed or flee. Is it something I can eat or something that can eat me? So that their tongue is, they have nostrils, but they use their tongue to sense particles in the air. Okay. And last but not least, we have, we have a tortoise that yep. you're, you're going to yep. put ZB back in the, put in the green box. Back. She's, uh, now they can bite. There's a lot of people that have gotten bit by tegus. They're not venomous, but they can give you a nasty bite, but she is never offered offered to bite. Right. Now, and, and this one, this, this little critter has been making noise since you got here. Yep. Now this is a tortoise, different from a turtle in the fact that she does not have webbed feet, she doesn't swim, she lives on land, she's terrestrial. And this... So that's how you tell between a tortoise? Yeah, best thing is um, no webbed feet on a tortoise, no adaptation of webbed feet to swim. And usually their shell is more higher domed so they don't have any conflict when they swim. There's no air, uh, aqua dynamics to stop them from swimming. But this is not a gopher tortoise, which we have here. But it's similar to it's a It's very gopher. similar. This one is actually from Russia. And I've had her about as long as the pine, pine snake. I've had her about 12 to 15 years. Her name is Ruby Jean, and I don't know how she got that name. But anyway, um, but we have something called a gopher tortoise here, which is protected. And people don't realize they're like the pine snake. We talked about the pine snake disappearing. The pine snake lives in the gopher tortoise burrows, along with there's been over 300 animals, other animals, recorded living in gopher tortoise burrows. So they're kind of like the landlord of the pines. They dig this burrow and live there, and over 300 animals have been documented living in there with them, including venomous snakes, including mammals. So without the gopher tortoise, we wouldn't have all these other animals Surviving and the, and the gopher tur tortoise is a protected species. Yes, in it is. Florida or in the nation. It, their range only goes up to Jasper County, South. So they're in Florida, Georgia, and they may go west to Mississippi. Most states they are protected because here again they're an upland species. They live in pine forest, sandy areas that don't flood, and we tend to overbuild there. And as a result, the gopher tortoise is declining. But yes. 
like they are protected. Um, and again, it's because the, they produce habitat for other things. Other animals, and, right. And I mean, I, I don't mean to be, uh, is, are they good eating? I mean, is, uh, you know, is that why some people would, would take good these? Good point. Uh, probably in some rural areas, it still happens. They're, they used to take cane poles and put a big hook on the end of them. And they used to take the cane pole and run them down the tortoise hole, which can be up to 20 or 30 feet diagonally deep. And they used to hook the tortoise and yank it out and they, and they would cook them. I don't know, you know, it's, it's against the law, obviously, but that's the way some people years ago, and the Florida crackers used to feed on these. And you know, hey, that's, there were no- Back, back in the day. Back in the day when there, there was no McDonald's. Yeah. You know? uh, <laughs> Next best thing is a, a, is a, a gopher turtle gopher, burger. Gopher turtle uh, burger. That, that's that's yeah. cool. So uh, again, uh, when you uh, when you're presenting like you are today, mm -hmm. you would bring three or four oh, of yeah, these at animals least, to at least, to, yeah. and the kids get to see touch up and close. feel if they want to. Um, they get to interact. Very. I encourage questions, and once again, it's all about the food chain. We're all linked into this food chain. You know, it's, it's interesting that, you know, you mentioned it's almost got like fingernails. Yes, it uh, does. And, yeah. and, and you, you, that's the difference when you're identifying a species, you're, you're looking at versus the web feet. Uh, that's, that's a pretty, yeah, pretty e neat thing to. Even the aquatic turtles, they have nails too, but this, she has, she has a real, she has like designer nails. Designer. Yeah. <laughs> so. Press on nails. Yeah, press on. There you go. There you go. All right. So. Well, let's talk about uh, you, your uh, in, in your quest for uh, knowledge to, to get knowledge to all young people. And I, you know, as an a, an older adult, I find it interesting to learn about these things as well. Uh, but you uh, you want want to start? A, a, I think what you said an, as a nature club. Let's talk a little right. bit about that. You know. <laughs> The mission is clear. I'm trying to stamp out. I know that sounds kind of rough, but try to trying to minimize nature deficit disorder. Um, I have a, a quote here. If we are going to save environmentalism and the environment, we must also save an endangered indicator species, the child in nature. And that's from Richard Liu, the last child in the woods. Um, in addition to amazing animals, we're starting a nature club. And, and for lack of a better better word or, or better terminology it's right now it's going to be called the North Florida Nature Club and it's open to all ages we have not had our first meeting yet we're going to probably have it in February and it's going to be f for Columbia County Suwannee County Gainesville Alachua County and we're going to have monthly speakers there's going to be no charge no dues uh, there'll be an electronic newsletter sent out and we're going to have some of these every month it's going to be a different topic whether it's agriculture whether it's plants whether it's animals every month a different different speaker or a different topic now I, I, this would be great for people who like to camp oh exactly uh, you know rving is a is is a is one of the biggest uh, uh, i guess what people do when when they either retire right. or even family camping right it would be interesting to kind of put a talk around what you might see at your campsite. Oh, absolutely. I have done done some work with Yogi Bear Campground in Madison, just to that point. Um, I've done several programs there on alligators and snakes, and, and uh, that's a great point. You know, I, I, I hate to say this, but Walt Disney should have some folks on the payroll that can talk about what happens when you let when you go too close to the water. Uh, yep. uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Unfortunately, it had to end in, in a bad yeah. result for yeah, a family that's, from, that's, from and, up north. Yeah, and then to your point from a few minutes ago that there's a misconception there that there's a gator lurking in every pond waiting for a human. We're not their prey. Um, a lot of times it's the results of people feeding them, people getting throwing rocks at them, people basically invading their space. And don't forget all these animals were here before us. Um, so there's a balance. I'm not a tree hugger. I don't, you know, there's a balance there. Um, but unfortunately, some things do happen, and, and mostly they're preventable. All right. Well, uh, Jerry uh, is available. Uh, we're we're going to try to get him to come out here and do a couple talks to some of the students here at Florida Gateway College. And if you would like your school 
uh, to have Jerry come in and speak on topics of endangered species, uh, species that are venomous. Uh, you, I mean, I'm sure you do a, a thing on tortoises. You'll oh, do, yeah. Uh, 25 topics. Right, right now, what, what, what range of animals do you have? Oh, my goodness. Out of the 50 or 55, we have not much mammal-wise. We've got mostly reptiles and, well, snakes, lizards, tortoises, turtles, arachnids, which are spiders and scorpions. Great Halloween when great Halloween programs. Um, I don't have many mammals because there's so many rules and regulations to have mammals. Um, because it's costly to keep these. I, mean, I, I have liability insurance. I have to have permits from Fish and Wildlife, which have been really supportive, by the way. Um, I get a lot of their animals that they confiscate. But I don't have, I used to have, when I was younger, I had bears, I had otters, I had all kinds of things. But there's so many requirements to have mammals now that you have to have an annual vet check. There's USDA requirements. And unfortunately, I don't have, I have access to, am, to, to mammals. But I, you know, but I mostly do snakes, alligators, Animal tracks, nature detective, leaping lizards, turtles and tortoises, and it goes bats, which is a mammal. But uh, well, so. and and see, bats bats are in the news in a oh, bad way. Yeah. Where a young a young child was bitten by a bat and got rabies. Yeah. How how is that? Does that happen all the time? No. Or or no. do bats? But bats are carriers of rabies. Every mammal population has the capability to carry rabies but less than one-tenth of one percent of bats are rabid. The only time you hear about bats, normally, is if someone gets bit. How do they get bit? They pick it up. If you see a bat on the ground, that's not where it's supposed to be. You hear right. again, they, leave it. Yeah, bat, a bat should be flying. And uh, again, yeah. you know, if you see a fox that's out during the day, that's right. very friendly, right. and those are some things that you probably cover I, as well. Uh, yes. You just want to leave those alone because right. there's something wrong with them because right. they're normally are afraid of people. Your chances of getting bit by a bat and getting rabies are probably about the same as you winning the big lottery. And so you know what your chances are, very, so very minimal. Think about Powerball next time. There you go. Well, Jerry, uh, if uh, folks need more information on any of your uh, programs, you can call Jerry or uh, call him at this number, or you can uh, email him and he'll respond to your email. Uh, and here's his email address. Uh, on the screen right now. Jerry, I appreciate you coming on the program and do, doing the work that you do for uh, North Florida and wish you the best of luck with the Nature Club. If you want to contact Jerry about being part of the, the Nature Club that's forming here in North Central Florida, this number as well is uh, where you can reach uh, Jerry. Thank, thank you for being on the program. Thank you very much, Mike. And thank you for watching Perspective here on Florida Gateway College Television. Until next time, so long.